Remote sensing is observing a medium, a process, some phenomenon, without ever coming in direct contact with that phenomenon. So unlike a lab experiment or where you go to a place and make an in situ measurement or actually touching the medium, remote sensing is observing it remotely from a distance. And this actually provides a different kind of perspective on things. When you're part of your medium, you're part of your experiment, you're part of the experience, you get one perspective that's crucial. You get a very different one when you're removed from it, when you're looking from space, when you're looking from four or five hundred miles away, or in some cases, 20,000 miles away. We can start up close, we can stand in a place and look at it, and we can zoom out, and all of a sudden it takes on new meaning. The trees are part of a broader system that sit on a landmass that is a country that's part of a continent that sits in an ocean. And as we step back further and further and look at those same trees, we may not see the leaves from far away, but we see the trees and how they fit into a broader earth system, the clouds that surround them, the ice that's far north or far south of them, the oceans that really are affecting the climate that is causing those trees to grow. A decade ago, the earth observing system was beginning to be put in place, a series of satellites designed to observe the earth, take a snapshot of the earth over a period of years to understand its behavior. Well, to date, there are 14 earth observing satellites orbiting right now. And of those 14, 13 are past their design life. They're living on borrowed time and could go away at any moment. The Earth is changing in ways that will affect our lives. And just as we're realizing how and why these changes are occurring, our ability to understand them is diminishing.